those you have here around in my second series on ARDL and three ways causality to checks. Please, before you watch this one, make sure you have watched the first video where I explain what causality is all about, the different definitions, and how you can frame it within an ARDL model. In this video, I will only be discussing the first two checks out of the three causality checks. This is because I don't want to ram all the three checks in one video. I really want you to get the understanding so that you can give me your feedback after you have practiced on your own. The third check will be covered in my third video where I will also talk about diagnostics checks. So here in eViews, I have the group data, domestic credit, real interest rates, and the log of investments. I have done stationarity tests and I've also determined the optimal lags. If you don't know how to test for stationarity or determine optimal lags, please click on the eViews playlist in the video link below and familiarize yourself with the steps. My videos are very simple to follow. Just load in your data and do exactly what I've done. I've also given simple interpretations to all my video tutorials. So having said that, let's just go to quick and I'm going to take domestic credits as the first dependent variable after which I do the same for real interest rates and the log of investment. So I go to quick, estimate equation, and I list the variables. I'm changing method from least squares to ARDL. And in the ARDL interface, I change from case two to case three, which is unrestricted constant and no trend. The maximum lag for dependent variable is one, while those for the regressors, I'm going to use two, because the one for real interest rate is lag two. Every other thing looks okay, then I click okay. So on the screen now is a result for domestic credit growth. You can see it here, and you can see the method is ARDL. From the output, the first check is that you can use the statistical significance of the regressors to determine or to infer causality. Let's look at the real interest rate. This is the coefficient, and we can see that the p-value is above 0.05, is 18.94%. So clearly, this is equal to zero. It is not significant. For the log of investment, this is the coefficient 0.33, and we can see the prop value is 4.5%, which is below 5%. So this is statistically significant. So from these two regressors, we can infer that the log of investment has a short-run causal effect on domestic credit growth. The second way to check is by using the world test. So we go to view, we maneuver to question diagnostics, and we go to wall test. You click that. Now, before you perform the wall test, you should know that EVUs assigns numbering to the coefficients. So the lag of DC growth takes coefficient one, real interest rate coefficient takes coefficient two, this takes coefficient three, and the constant is coefficient four. So we begin by testing the coefficient of the real interest rates whether it has any causal influence, even though we have seen from here that it's not significant, but let us test anyway. So we have C2 equals zero, and we can see the result is not surprising. This is the T statistics that we got from the regression, and this is the F statistic, see the chi-square. So from here we can see there is no short-run causality from real interest rates to domestic credit growth. Let's test for investment using the world test. we we'll go to view. Coefficient diagnostics, maneuver to wall test. So here we type in C3 because that is a number for the coefficient of log of investment. So C3 equals zero. So here we can see the F statistics is in agreement with the T statistics. At 5% level, we can also see the chi-square is also significant at the 5% level. So we can also conclude here that the log of investment has a short-run causal effect on domestic credit. Same thing for real interest rate as a dependent variable. We change method here to ARDL. We change from case 2 to case 3. The maximum lag for the real interest rate is 2. Other regressors 1. Every other thing looks okay. Okay. This is the outcome for the real interest rate as a dependent variable you can see here and you can see ARDL as a model. From the regressor's coefficients, we can see that the first lag of domestic credit is significant at the 1% level, 
and the first line of investment is also significant at the 5% level. So we can say that there is short-run causality from the first lag of domestic credit and the first lag of investment to real interest rate. That is one way to check for short-run causality. Now, the second way is by subjecting it to the world test. Like I showed you before, let's do the same for the real interest rate. We go to view and over to coefficient diagnostics and we click on world test. So let us give it the appropriate numbering. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are testing together coefficient three and four because those are the coefficients attributable to domestic credit. So we are testing C3, C4 equals zero. Remember, coefficient C3 and C4 are the coefficients of domestic credit. So make sure you are putting the appropriate coefficients. Click OK. So this is the outcome of the world test. So the F statistics and the chi-square shows there's a statistical significance from domestic credit to the real interest rate. So we can say here that domestic credit causes the real interest rate in the short run. So finally, let's do the same for the log of investment as the dependent variable. So we go to quick, maneuver to estimate equation, and type in the variables. Remember to change your method from least squares to ARDL. And again, I'm changing to case three. The dependent variable in this case takes one lag. The regressors, two lags because of the real interest rate. Every other thing looks okay, I click okay. So here again is the outcome for the log of investment. You can see it up here as a dependent variable and the method is ARDL. So let's take a look at the regressors coefficients. I can see here that domestic credit is significant at the 5% level and the second lag of the real interest rate is significant at the 5% level. So that is one way to check for short-run causality in the log of investment equation. So now let's go to world test to see whether there's going to be a confirmation or a digression. So we go to view, coefficient diagnostics, the world test. Always remember that E views assigns numberings to all the coefficients. So that of domestic credit growth takes coefficient 2. So C2 equals 0. So here we can see that domestic credit has a short-run causal influence on the log of investments. The p-values are significant at the 5% level. So let's do the same thing for the real interest rate. We are going to test coefficient 3, 4, 5 because those are the coefficients that are related to the real interest rates. We go to view, coefficient diagnostics, wall test. So C3, C4, C5. You can see neatly spelled out C3 equals C4 equals C5 equals 0. Okay. So here we can see that the real interest rate does not have any causal effect in the short run on the log of investment. And neatly put on the table is the outcome of the two tests that we just did. In the domestic credit growth uh, equation, investment is significant and using the world test, it's a confirmation. Same thing when we did the real interest rate regression, the first lag of domestic credit and the first lag of investment were significant. And when we subjected that to test, the outcome is that domestic credit and investment causes real interest rate. In the log of investment equation, domestic credit is significant and the world test also showed that domestic credit causes investment. So you can see a similarity between the world test and the T-statistics. It's just a confirmation of the other. So we can always conclude here that there's a unidirectional causality from domestic credit to real interest rate. How do we come to that conclusion? If you look at the domestic credit equation, there is no influence coming from real interest rates. But when you look at the real interest rate equation, you can see a causal relationship from domestic credit to real interest rate. So that's how we're able to infer a unidirectional causality. Same thing for investment to real interest rate. There is a unidirectional causality from the log of investment to the real interest rate, but no causality from real interest rates to investment. So it's a unidirectional relationship. However, investment and domestic credit growth exhibits bidirectional causality. In the domestic credit growth equation, investment exhibits a causal influence on it. Likewise, in the investment regression, domestic credit exhibits a causal influence. All of these 
in the short run. So like I said, using causality checks in your paper or in your manuscript or in your dissertation enriches your work. It brings out a lot of information to your audience and to your readers. In conclusion, just like I showed you earlier on, the T statistics and the F statistics will always indicate short-run causal effects between or among the variables. And each of these tests can always serve a robustness for the other. You can always use one to validate the other one. Again, if you need more references on how to run causality checks, read up these following test books and also source other journals out there. It's good to have you. Please don't go away. Stay with me in my next video where I'll show you how to run the touch check and also perform some diagnostics. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so and let me have your feedback. Thank you.